I'm so excited to show you guys the books that I'm planning on reading in March and these are the 20 books that I want to read and I'm really excited because I'm going to be showing you guys the books I'm going to be reading in a different like way than I normally do. I'm going to categorize all the books into little sections like spicy reads, uh, young adult, um, and just different things that I feel like it'll be easier for you guys to figure out like what you enjoy because I pretty much only read romances and thrillers and I think that if I'm in those two like genres, it's probably hard to figure out like which ones you would want to read. So I'm going to categorize the books that way and I think it'll be easier for you guys because I know you guys love these videos and you love getting recs from me. So uh, yeah, let's get into the 20 books I want to read in March. Let's first start out with the young adult books that I want to read. I have four young adult books that I want to read this month and the first book is If Only I Had Told Her. Now this is the second book and this is from Finn's point of view and the first book I actually rated five stars and I read it I think last year. Sob my eyes out. You can see that it's definitely had some wear. I remember finishing this on um, a flight back from I think Arizona. I was with my mom literally crying in the airport. My mom is like, girl, get it together. My mom. It was so good. And this is from Finn's point of view. And I think the reason why I rated this five stars is because it made me like think about how hard high school is and how it's so hard to like be who you really want to be and not conform to like who you feel like you're supposed to be. Um, and this was just something that I feel like took me back to that time, which is hard to do. I feel like that's one thing I really love about young adult books is being able to be taken back to a time when things were harder and I was trying to get through something. And now as an adult, I can kind of look back and reflect and be like, okay, that was hard. And that's what made me into who I am today. So I'm really excited to read this one. It just was released. And so it'll be hopefully a really good read. Um, another book that I'm excited to read is uh, The Way I Am Now, which is actually the second book to The Way I Used to Be. Love this book. I rated this one, I can't remember what I rated it, maybe three and a half stars. I think um, it was a hard read and I was very surprised that it was a young adult book because it was so hard to read. But I think that this book is supposed to be more of like a redemption sequel, like to give more perspective into where the character is now because this one I feel had a very like sad ending, which I think could have been hard for someone in high school to read, which is kind of why I was like, I don't know how I feel about it because if someone in high school picks up that book and it's like very sad and desolate and it like has an ending that makes them continue to feel that way, I just like, I don't know how I feel about that. But I'm excited for the second book because I could not put this book down and I really hope that she kind of has her happy ending in this book. Um, we'll obviously see if she does or not. Um, and then another book that I want to read that's a young adult book is The Wrong Kind of Weird by James Ramos. I want to read more books written by men. And this is a young adult book that looks really cute. It's about a guy who is kind of into both girls. And one of them I think is like popular and the other girl she's kind of like quirky and different. Um, and I think that he likes them both but he just doesn't know who he wants to pick I think. Um, not 100% positive but it just looks like a good book and I've had this on my TBR for a long time and it also has a little comment by Elise Bryant who you guys know I love. She wrote Reggie and Delilah's Year Falling and it says that this book is sweet, snarky, and delightfully dorky. And another young adult book that I'm excited to read is You Bet Your Heart by Daniel Parker. This is her debut book and I actually saw that this book is on Audible. So this might actually be a book that I tandem read with audiobook. Um, if you guys didn't know, Spotify actually has like free audiobooks if you are on premium and I feel like they have a more diverse like list of books like I feel like whenever I look on other like audiobook um what's it called um uh, apps and stuff it's hard for me to find like books by black authors that are very like niche and stuff or like new and I feel like they these are very easy to find. Um, so this one might actually be one that I tandem read with audiobook. I usually listen to audiobooks if I'm cooking, if I'm cleaning, if I'm in the shower, or if I'm just like driving, doing things I literally cannot be reading a physical book like while I'm doing. Uh, I don't really listen to podcasts anymore. Um, or at least as much as I used to. And so whenever I want to have something on when I can't physically read a book, I listen to an audiobook. So this might be one of the ones that I listen to on audiobook. And on the front, this also says that Elise Bryant said that this was romantic, real, and tender. Um, I don't really know what this one's about, 
but it does say it's a riveting swoon worthy romance about excellence exceptionalism and the lengths people will go for love and success and obviously it's a young adult book so um, I'm excited for that one then we have some thrillers so the two thrillers that I have I don't have a ton of thrillers because I feel like as it gets closer to summer I just am really wanting to read like more romances but I have When She Returned by Lucinda Berry and this is the author who wrote Saving Noah which I enjoyed that book um, I feel like her writing is really easy to read and she has a ton of like very unique storylines and I think this is about a woman who it says she disappears a wife and a mother and she comes home a stranger and I think she ends up getting like kidnapped or something and then her family once she gets back she, they try to reintegrate her into society after like going through trauma um so I'm not really sure what this book is about but I feel like going into thrillers I like to go into them that way um and she wrote The Appetite for Innocence as well so I've read two books of hers I feel like whenever I get on a thriller kick for someone I kind of like just stay with their books um that's just how I am I feel like when I find someone I like I want to continue to read the books that they come out with and then I also um picked up uh take it back by kia abdullah i've never read anything of hers but so many of you guys said that her, this book and just all her books are good um this says one victim four accused who is telling the truth and so you kind of just have to go through a courtroom setting to figure out who you believe when it comes to the victim and the accused and Again, I've never read anything of hers, but this should be a good thriller. The next books we have are kind of like literary fiction vibes. So this is actually in the romance section. It's Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino, and I will link all the books below. Um, I read Before We Were Strangers, I think it's what it's called by this author. I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I think it's because when I first started reading just romance in general, I feel like I only wanted fluffy romances and I didn't really recognize that there were like other options for romances. This book I feel is going to give the vibe of like Taylor Jenkins Reid's One True Love's Romance if that makes any sense. Like this is the type of romance that literary fiction girlies probably will love. Um, because when I read Before We Were Strangers, I think that's what it's called, um, it gave that vibe. So this says imagine opening a book and discovering that someone else has written your life story. Um, it's about a girl who I think she sees or reads a book by this guy and she finds out that the person who wrote the book is like her ex-boyfriend or something like that um, from childhood. I'm like 95% sure that that's like the storyline but I bought this book a long time ago and I actually saw a YouTuber talk about this book. I think her name is Brie. You guys know I'm always looking, like always looking for like black booktubers to share with you. So if you guys want another video like that, let me know. And I know you guys have also asked for black male booktubers that you can watch. Let me know if you guys want another video like that because I feel like they come up on my like explore page a lot because I'm constantly digging for them and constantly watching videos of even like very small creators or new creators. So yeah, I found um, a video of hers, love her channel. She's like so freaking cute. And I, I'm pretty sure she read this book and said that she loved it. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna read it. So I put this one on my list for this month. And then uh, My Dark Vanessa by Elizabeth, Kate Elizabeth Russell has been on my TBR one other time before, but I never read it and I wanna read it this time. Um, this is supposed to be a really, really sad but heartfelt book about a girl who I'm pretty sure ends up dating her professor, but she's like underage. And so it's like, obviously it should not have happened. And it talks about, I think, how there's like a court case for him in the future. So you get like a past and present timeline and in the present timeline there's a court case and I think they're trying to, um, he's like going to court for like crimes against younger women and I think that she is one of the younger women. She's trying to decide if she wants to come forward or not so you also get her past which is her and this relationship that she felt was, I think, a good one. Um, but obviously with time, you realize that it's not. I actually opened up about how I was in a relationship with someone, and I wouldn't say relationship because I use that very loosely, but I was talking with someone when I was younger. I was 16 and they were in their like mid 20s and I remember one person commented and was like, oh, I don't think that that's like a weird age range. And to me, I think that that is weird only because when you are 15 years old, you do not have a license. Like your parents are driving around places. Most of the time when you're that age, you're just kind of coming into your own. Like I think I started wearing a bra when I was like, 
13. I started my period when I was 13. I was kind of like a late bloomer in like those areas. So by 15, I'm really just like getting the reins on like being a quote unquote woman, which I mean, I'm 15. And then when I turned 16, like I had just turned 16, I had just got my license. Um, so I was just driving around to like place on my own, whereas someone who's in their mid 20s, your mid twenties, like you've already gotten past the stage of like drinking legally for the first time. You are like past the age of like a legal adult. Also, not only that, I feel like it is very like odd if someone who like, I don't know, someone wants to be with you and you are in a completely different stage of life than them, but like in a childlike state, like I feel like if someone is 40 and someone's 30, that's different because you guys are both very much adults. But if someone's like mid 20s, like you're out of college, like you went through high school, you went through college and you want to be with someone who like just got their driver's license, like that to me is weird. So I can't say that it's weird for everyone because everyone has their own things. And I know in certain states, like there, certain things are legal. Like I remember being young and literally telling him, I was like, I can't wait until I'm 17 because it'll be legal for us to be together when it's literally not even legal in the state that I live in to be with someone who's that age when you're like under 17. And I remember kept being like, thank goodness I don't have to wait till I'm 18 because like, I don't think I can wait that long to be with him. Like that is weird. I remember, we're gonna do like a little tangent here because now I'm starting to think of all these other things that I'm like, this is weird. Like that's not normal. And I remember all of these other instances with this person where they were almost showing me how to become a woman. And I feel like that is very much giving grooming. And so I'm interested to read this story. And I feel like I really like reading stories that can make me think deeper about my own life experiences and things that some people may or may not agree is appropriate. Um, obviously, I don't know the age of this girl. Um, she could have been in like middle school. I don't know. I, I think it's like, maybe high school and like a college professor or maybe it's like um early college and a late professor i don't really know so it'll be interesting to see that but it was interesting that comment that i got and i do think that back in the day like there was more of an acceptance of people of different ages like i know my grandparents had a 10 year age difference and like that wasn't really that big of a deal but again i still feel like it's less weird if you're closer in age of like adulthood versus like, uh, I don't know, like 13 year old and 23. Like, yeah, that's 10 years, but that's still very, very different timelines in age. Or like 16 and 26, that's very different in like timeline of like growth and adulthood. So very excited to read this. I feel like books like this always bring out so much discussion, which I think is why people enjoy reading literary fictions. Um, and I did like put the little title of these two books as literary fiction, but really this one I think is in the romance section. I think, um, but I do know that before we were strangers, or maybe before we were strangers is in the romance section, and this one is in the literary fiction section. I don't know. I know that this one is for sure in the literary fiction section at Barnes, so I'm really excited to read both of these. Now let's get into the spicy reads. Let me know if you guys like how I'm breaking up all of these, because I usually just sit like a big stack and I'll just like go through each one. But I feel like this is giving you guys a good view on like how I make sure to mix up my entire like TBR. Like I don't like to read like only fluffy reads or only YA or only spicy reads. Like I like to kind of mix it around. So these are spicy reads, but these are also all indie reads. So I think that that is just like, I don't know, fun to add in. These are books that you probably will not find in Barnes or if you do, they're probably gonna have different covers. Um, so the first one is Into the Tide by Laura Pavlov. And I'm pretty sure that this has been on my TBR one other time. I actually picked this up from the bookstore last chapter Chicago um, in Chicago and they have such a great selection, like literally one of my favorite bookstores in Chicago because they have such a great selection of indie books. Like books that literally like, I'm like, how did you find these? But on the back it says, she's my best friend's little sister, completely off limits, but every man has his breaking point. That alone, I'm in. I'm literally in. And one of my friends read this and really liked it. It's part of the Cottonwood Cove series, so it's set in a small town. Um, I think that this will be a good one. And then The Lie by Carla Sorensen. It says, rule number one for the team owner's daughter, don't date the players. So there's one of the players on the team, I think it's a football team, and the owner's daughter might be interested, I'm not sure, but it looks really good. Um, also, all of these have really high ratings on Goodreads, which I mean, 
It can mean a lot, but it can also mean literally nothing. But I feel like whenever I go into a book by an author that I've never heard of before and no one has really like said like, is this author any good? It's kind of nice to look through you guys' reviews. I don't really care about anybody else's reviews because I don't know them. But I feel like if you guys are here, we probably have maybe not similar tastes, but like you guys, I feel like are similar to me in a way. Like, I don't know, maybe we're not, but like, I feel like I like to read through a lot of you guys' reviews, so make sure to follow me over on Goodreads because I do look through your reviews when I'm looking for a book to see if I like want to bring it home. Also picked this one up from that same bookstore. Um, I'm actually going to be going on a bookstore trip there really soon with someone that you guys know and love and you guys love the bookish trips and you guys love the trip that I recently went on to the Smoky Mountains with the girls. So this is going to be another trip that will be really fun and I think you guys will really love it. It's coming up soon. So make sure you guys are also following me on Instagram and TikTok because that's where I will be sharing in real time. And I also picked up Don't Let Me Fall by Kelsey Ray. On the back it says, I want a girl I can't have. She's my tutor, my best friend's girlfriend, and my kryptonite. She also looks really good in my t-shirt, but she wants the golden boy, and I'm more of the villain type. Or at least I was, until I saw her smile for the first time. But the good guy she wants wouldn't lust after his friend's girlfriend, and the good guy she's with shouldn't be sneaking around behind her back. So where the heck does that leave me? And it doesn't say heck, but you guys know I don't curse. Um, but yeah. This one looks like a good one and I was book shopping and I met some besties in the bookstore and one of the girls was actually talking about this when I was in the Champaign, Illinois bookstore. So I was like, you know what? That's literally on my TBR. Let me go pick that up and read it. And then the last book, which is a book that has been so highly rated, is The Devil You Know by Elizabeth O'Rourke. I've never read anything by her, but I've heard so many people talk about this book and just rate it like such high reviews. So many people have said that this is like... I don't know, such an underrated book and more people need to be talking about it. On the back it says, there's a devil on my shoulder and every Monday morning she announces herself. She's this delicious flame in my chest, a, flur a flurry of whispered suggestions in my ear and every single one of them is about Ben Tate. Ben, stellar of clients, evictor of homeless women, nemesis. Sitting across from me every dang Monday with his lovely smug smile and his two perfect teeth, the living symbol of everything I hate. It's been my policy to avoid him, but when a case comes into the firm, one that could change his career and mine, I make an exception. It means weekends and evenings by his side. It means enduring his smirk and his smart mouth and never taking the bait until the night Ben says beg. And the devil on my shoulder decides to make a few demands of her own. <gasps> ah! This looks good. It looks really good. So these are all indie reads, but these are all also all spicy. Um, you guys know I'm not a huge spice girl, but I usually try to spice girl. <laughs> I usually try to mix in spicy reads along with the more like heavier reads or the reads that maybe don't have any spice like the YA books. I feel like it's a nice little balance. This is my stack of diverse reads but I already showed you guys some diverse reads in the YA books. But yeah so these are all diverse but they also have their own little sections. I have a little section I want to show you guys with my auto by authors I think I want to continue to read every single month. And then I also have a queer read, which I try to add in at least one queer read throughout just like all of the books that I pick because I think that that is so important to include queer reads into what I'm reading every single month. And this is called Rosewater by Liv Little. Not only do I add in queer reads, I try to add in like graphic novels or books with different body types, or I'll try to also add in books by indie authors. I think it is so important to read diversely in all capacities. So I really encourage you guys to do the same because I really try to do the same as well. Uh, this is by Liv Little. I actually picked this one up in a indie bookstore in Chicago and I haven't read it yet but it looks really good. It says a deliciously gritty and bold debut novel about intergenerational love, healing, and one woman's journey home. And uh, again, this is a book that I've never like read from this author, but it is a debut novel. This also is giving like smart girl. I feel like there's just those books where like if you read it, people are like, oh, what are you reading? And I'm like, I don't know, what am I reading? Like, <laughs> I don't know, it just, it's giving smart girl. And I love adding in a smart girl book. Like, it just looks really good. So excited for this one. And then I also picked up, um, 
this to add into my TBR this month. I try to add in at least one graphic novel because I think that these are a good palette cleanser between um, like heavier books and I have a couple heavy books on my list to read this month. So this book is, uh, well I guess it says on the front, it says every day a different body, every day a different life, every day in love with the same girl. So I think that explains enough what this book is about and I think that this is actually a traditionally like published book um, as well and then they just turned it into a graphic novel so you can actually read this just like in a regular book sense if you want to. Now, these are um, the books that are my auto buy authors that I want to read a book of theirs every single uh, month, or at least try to. Kennedy Ryan is and will forever be an auto buy author for me. Anything she writes, I wanna read, and I own so many of her books and series, because I am like someone who loves to read a series. I own the Grip series. I've read um, her first book, which was, Wow, I literally can't even think of the name, but I read the first book. I want to say it's called like, oh, Flow. That's what it's called, I think. Flow or Flawless. Flow, I think that's what it's called. Um, and I read that book and it's very short. It's like 115 pages. So I want to get into this because it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger. And I actually had this on my TBR literally last year and never got to it. So I want to read this, but I also have... Uh, read Long Shot by Candy Ryan, and I want to read the rest of the Hoop series, which is Block Shot and Hook Shot. And I also, uh, what else have I read? I read uh, Before I Let Go, and hopefully we'll be reading the second book very soon. Uh, which is This Could Be Us. And then I also have the Bennett series, the entire series, I own it. Have not read any of them yet, which is three books. I think she normally does like three books in her series. So I own a lot of her books and I wanna try to add one book onto my TBR of hers every month because I just love her writing. Another auto buy author that I have is Natasha Bishop. Anything she writes, I will buy. She wrote um, the book, uh, whoa, Where We Found Our Passion, which is the third book in this series and I actually read it um, first because someone that I follow on TikTok, she said that it was a great read, read it, loved it, and now I want to go back to the first book, but you can read all of them out of order. So you guys know I do not like books with men on the cover. I just don't. So I probably will end up um, putting this on my Kindle and reading it on my Kindle. Um, it is on Kindle Unlimited as well, I'm pretty sure. Uh, don't quote me on that though. Don't quote me on that. And she also wrote um, Only for the Week as well. So love this author. I've read two of her books and this will be my third one. And then I also want to read The Mixtape by Brittany Cherry. I have read The Holly Dates by her. I've read Disgrace by her, which you guys will get um, a little taste of what that book was about in this month's wrap up. And then I also have read um, The Coldest Winter by her. Love her books. Every single one of her books, so good. Um, her writing actually reminds me a lot of Natasha Bishop's writing. Um, so I'm adding this one in as well. This one is about a songwriter and I'm pretty sure he falls in love with, he falls in love with someone. It's about a songwriter. Um, this one, so this whole series is actually about um, a, like three brothers, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I could be completely wrong. I actually don't really care what they're about because if they're by these three authors, I'm reading them. I'm literally reading them. Now this one I'm excited about because the first book kind of leaves you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. So I feel like the, all those will be good. Another author who may, I wouldn't say she's the auto buy author for me because I've only read one of her books, but I really liked reading Continuum by her. So I want to read more of her books to see if maybe she'll fall into that auto buy author category. Um, this is called Broken Clocks. Um, this is supposed to be a very heart-wrenching book. Now make sure you're following me on Goodreads because you guys know I'm very harsh with my ratings, like very harsh. And I don't try to be in like a mean way, but I just try to be because I read so many books. I usually read between 16 to 20 a month. So if I'm reading that many, every book cannot be five stars. Every book cannot be four and a half stars. Every book cannot be four stars because like, they just all do not equally measure up, you know? So I feel like most books on average are like three stars or three and a half stars, because that's like the average. Um, and anything above that is usually like four, four and a half, five. The average is not bad, but I feel like most books do fall into that category. So with that, if you guys want to know like my thoughts in real time, go to my Goodreads because I update it every single week. Um, but whenever I read Continuum, I feel like I really liked how much dialogue was in it. And I feel like this book also has the same kind of vibe. Then I also have a love song for Ricky Wilde, which is by Tia Williams. Um, I'm actually 
really excited because um, she's going on tour with Kennedy Ryan and I really want to go to one of their like tour dates um, Just to like, get my book signed by her. I love seven days in June. I thought it was such a good read so I want to um, Read another book by her and I feel like her books are also for the literary fiction girlies If you are someone who wants to read a romance I feel like these are the good types of books that you would really enjoy but I kind of just put it into the diverse category section instead of like the other ones because I don't know I feel like this falls in like books for, you know, diverse reads. So, um, and I also have a uh, Liar's Game by Eric Jerome Dickey. This will be the first book that I've read by him, but I'm adding this into this month because I want to read more books by authors that were really big and popular within like the 90s because I didn't really read a ton of romance during that time because for when I was young and then by the time I got older, I just kind of went straight from high school to college. So I didn't really read adult books at all like romance books and I feel like I skipped a large chunk of incredible writers so I'm kind of going back and reading a lot of the really popular books then and so many of you guys have given me such great wrecks like such great wrecks I want to pick up an invisible life um there's just so many good books so many good authors and I just can't keep up but I want to not only read these but see if they live up to like the hype and if I enjoy them and I want to talk about them and share them with people who maybe also missed out on this same time period because maybe we were like 18 years old or 19 years old and still kind of reading YA or maybe we were in college and we weren't really reading romance. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I feel like this will be a good one. And that is all 20 books that I want to read during the month of March. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys are reading. What's like your most anticipated read for this month? Like what's on your TBR? What are you excited to read in March? Like the thing that you just cannot stop thinking about, let me know because I wanna hear what it is and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.